Alright, hey YouTube, this is Ian with Atkins Nature Aquariums, and we're going to be installing this CO2 generator from F-Zone that I got off Amazon. And if you have not seen the unboxing, make sure you see the unboxing, I'll link it somewhere. I haven't figured out how to really put it in a teaser card thing. But eventually I will. So pretty much what we gotta do is fill this thing. That's a big boy. A lot bigger than what I thought it was. But before we do that, we gotta do a couple prep. Prep things. So we get this regulator. That's pretty hefty too. It's got nice knobs on it. Just not gonna touch it. So there's a sticker here for this to plug into. That sticker didn't come off very clean. I think it will be okay. Alright, so that's hand tight. And it already comes with an O-ring attached. And it comes with an extra one in the box, which is pretty good because O-rings are meant to fail. Eventually, they're the point of failure. They're meant to be replaced. There's also a little O-ring right there. There's an o-ring right there for the bubble counter. So we got that shut off. And that is pretty much going to go on that. I'll, I'll demonstrate. That's what it's pretty much going to look like. Looks pretty nice if you ask me. So we're going to set this aside. And now we'll start with the dry ingredients that make the CO2. So you're gonna need a scale. This one I ordered off of Amazon. Now if I'll try to put links to this system in the description and I'll also try and put links to everything the scale. So if you want to try this system at home, you can. If you want to try and do CO2 without spending an arm and a leg, doing a fully pressurized system. So this kit that I found comes with a measuring cup and a funnel. So that works out pretty good. And this one goes all the way up to 500 mils. But pretty much, we're just going to set that on there, put it on. Alright, so you gotta let it zero out. Then put it on there. 
then zero it out again. I want to measure. Now uh, let me look. I already forget. Uh, 200 grams of citric acid and 200 grams of baking soda. So this is the citric acid that comes into play now. Point seven. That's pretty much as accurate as I'm gonna get it without being here all day. So that is 200 grams of citric acid. Okay, I got everything rinsed off. Citric acid, we're done with. So that's that. Now, baking soda. Alright, so that's 200 grams of baking soda. So now, this is the most important step. Do not shake anything. Don't do that. Don't do nothing. Shake that in. That's about it. But if you mix the two, it'll create a stronger reaction and release CO2 faster. We're trying to preserve it. So I'm gonna set this aside. All right, now I'm gonna rinse. Okay, I'm back. Got my cup rinsed and 300 milliliters of water. Doesn't have to be any certain temperature, just 300 milliliters. But when this reaction happens, it's going to occur very fast and it's gonna get very cold. So we gotta be at the ready with our regulator, which I will keep in the box to prevent damage of that little piece right there. Okay. And another important step is to make sure the bottle is at a 45 degree angle so that the CO2 can get trapped into the sides of the bottle not just escape straight out. If you know how gases work, this makes sense.
hear the reaction. That's normal. You don't want to wrench on it, you don't want to pound on it, you just want to leave it be. Let it build up pressure. Now it's going to get very cold. And you'll see it's already starting to move up. Let me see if I can move the camera in a little closer. Alright, so I got the flash on so you can see a little bit. but. The needle is starting to rise. So, this is all working. Go down the bottle. There's condensation forming. Why? Because it's getting very cold. Very, very cold. So. That's it. I'm not going to show you it building up pressure through time lapse. Now we're going to go to the tank and set this thing up on a timer and get solenoid all hooked up and the bubble counter filled with water and get the diffuser running. So I will be back. <laughs> 